morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Today, the Lord has made more rejoice. Be glad in it. I tell you, I am excited about what we're going to hear. God's word on this morning. Got Brother David Joyce from the Houston, Texas area. Brother Joyce will be speaking to us this morning on the subject of, is it once saved, always saved? I know he's going to do a phenomenal job. And again, he's going to handle and conduct the class the way he deems fit. He's going to open it up for any questions and comments that anybody might have at the end of his discussion on this morning as well. Brother Coffey did a phenomenal job yesterday. Where did he go? Oh, there he is. He did a phenomenal job on yesterday, last night, teaching on unity. And so we appreciate him. Brother Sawyer got us started yesterday morning. Phenomenal job on the strategy of Satan. And man, I tell you, I've just learned a lot thus far. So I just appreciate this congregation. Appreciate you all, your presence being here on this morning. What we'll do is we're going to, by request, I'm going to sing two songs. That's okay. We're going to sing, let's start off with the second one I was going to sing. Let's start off with 613. And then we'll have a prayer. And then we'll sing 712. And then we'll have our speaker of the hour, okay? 612. 13. 613. We'll sing this song. We'll have an opening prayer. We'll sing one more song. And then the next voice we'll hear be a brother, David Joyce from Houston, Texas. Hold to God's unchanging hand. We want to sing with the spirit and sing with understanding. If you have it, let's sing. Time is filled with swift transition. Not a birth on who can stand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hold to God's unchanging hand. Trust in him who will not leave you. Whatsoever years may bring, if my earthly friends for Second, still more closely to him cling. Hope to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. Hope to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. Build your hopes on things eternal. Hope to God's unchanging hand. Completed. If to God you have been true, fair and bright the home in glory, your enraptured soul will view. Hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand. Hold to his hand, to God's unchanging hand, build your hopes on things eternal, hold to God's unchanging hand. Amen. Amen. If you would, let's pray. Our God and our Father in heaven, we approach your throne of grace and your throne of mercy this morning in the name of Jesus. Thanking you, Father, first and foremost, for last night's lying down and this morning's rise. Thank you, Father, as we slumbered and slept in the image of death on last night. Things were going on around us that we were not privy to. Dear God, you woke us up. You protected us. You kept us from all hurt, harm, or danger. And for that, this morning, we want to say thank you. God, you've been better to us than we could ever been to ourselves. And we recognize that, Father, on this morning as we do recognize it every day of our lives. Father, we know we need you. Father, we know without you, we're nothing. Father God, I just pray, dear Father, that we live our lives to the best of our ability on this earth to glorify you and to honor you. Pray as the song that we just sang, dear Father, that we will continually hold on to your unchanging hand. Father, every day, Father, is not always alike. It's, it's not the same. Father, life changes. But God, you're a God who never changes. Father, we know what your will is. And Father, it's never a moving target. So, Father, when we open up your divine word, Father, we can know exactly what we need to do, what we need to say, how we need to conduct ourselves to find ourselves well-pleasing in your eyesight. And so, Father, we just ask that, God, that 
We work at our soul's salvation. We do it with fear and trembling. Father, we pray right now if there be any iniquities, any lawlessness in our heart. Father God, we ask right now as we search ourselves, we ask you to search us. If there be any, Father, thing that we've said, thought, or done contrary to your will, we ask that you remove it. And Father, hold it not against us in this world nor the world to come. But Father, also along with that, we ask that you defeat us when we do things and say things contrary to your will. We pray you will not ever let us be successful, dear God, because you love us. And Father, we just thank you, Father, so much for all that you've done. We ask now that you be with the speaker of the hour who will stand before us, Father, in just a few moments. We pray that, Father, that you will bring to his ready recollection things that he has prepared, and we pray that he'll be able to impart them to where the least or the greatest can get a better understanding of what does say the Lord. And, Father, I pray when the last amen is said, Father, on this morning, that all of us can say with honest hearts that we were glad that we were part of this spiritual feast. And this is our prayer, and we ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Our next song will be 712, and then the next voice we'll hear will be of our own brother, David Joyce. Uh, as I mentioned, we'll be speaking on the subject of, uh, is it once saved, always saved. 712, Jesus is coming soon, and then we'll have our brother David Joyce. If we have it, let's sing. Troublesome times are here, filling men's hearts with fear. Freedom we all, oh, oh dear, now is at stake. Humbling your heart to God, days from the chastening rod. Seek the way, pilgrims trot, Christians away. But Jesus is coming soon, morning or night. Oh, Many will be there do trumpet will sound all of the dead shall rise, right and meet in the skies, going where no one dies, ever were found. Love of so many call, losing their home of gold. This and God's word is so evils abound. When these signs come to pass, nearing the end at last, it will come very fast. Trumpets will sound. But Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom. Trumpets will sound, and all of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the skies, going where no one dies, ever were found. Trouble will soon be your happy forevermore. When we meet on that shore, free from all care. Rising up in the sky, telling this world goodbye. Onward we then will fly, glory to share. My Jesus is coming soon, morning or night or noon. Many will meet their doom, trumpets will sound, and all of the dead shall rise. Righteous meet in the skies, going where no one dies, ever were bound. Amen. 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 And the church of God says, Amen. 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 Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's an honor to be here this morning amongst all the saints of God and all of those in the household of faith. And uh, we give God all honor and give him all praise this morning for our being here because we know it was none other than his goodness uh, and his grace that allowed us all to be here this morning. Amen. And we are so grateful unto God, his son, Jesus Christ, Holy Spirit, and all of you. We're so grateful also uh, to uh, uh, this congregation and uh, uh, my brother, Brother Green, uh, who have, I understand he's the one that put this together. Is that right? Yeah. Amen. Amen. So uh, he's a hometown brother. Yeah. Amen. We're both from the Chicago area. Mm -hmm. So uh, he's from the what side? West side. Yeah, we, that's the best side. So West side. Don't, don't let anyone tell you different. 
<laughs> about Chicago. You know, we in our Chicago, you know, we battle a lot from the south side and the west side. And, you know, me and Brother Green are from the same side of town, but I was thank God to be able to meet this brother, I think maybe a year or so ago. And uh, but I am uh, uh, for those that don't know me, uh, I'm like uh, Brother Henry said, I am David Joyce from the uh, Houston, Texas area, uh, minister to the Eastgate Church of Christ in Ward, Texas area, which is uh, about 45 minutes south of uh, uh, Houston, southwest, I would say, Houston, for those that want the, uh, the geographic type idea of it. But I uh, uh, came to obey the gospel five years ago after 45 years of denominationalism. And uh, I give God all praise, and I have to. I have to uh, mention uh, brother, brother Stevenson that's here this, with us this morning. Uh, it was his uh, broadcast that he does along with two other brothers, brother Javier, brother Stephen Ozan. And I always tell this testimony everywhere I go. Had it not been for that broadcast, God allowed me to hear that broadcast. I would have not obeyed the gospel. I believe until this point, Lord willing. But it's because of their broadcast and them uh, giving book, chapter, and verse and teaching the oracles of God that I obeyed the gospel five years ago. And uh, they've been in the Lord's church since then and have a mind to live faithful unto death. Amen. 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 So I like to give that testimony everywhere I go because we know uh, as many of us uh, have come out of false churches and denominations and things of that nature. God always will bring the right preacher with the right message. Amen. 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 He always will do that. Everyone in this earth will have a chance before they leave this earth or Christ will lay his coming to obey the gospel or at least hear the gospel and uh, have a chance to obey it. Now, whether they obey it or not is another issue. But the idea is that the gospel shall be preached. As Jesus said, the gospel shall be preached and then the end shall come, meaning that everyone will have a chance and opportunity to hear the gospel of Jesus Christ. So I am so grateful this morning to be amongst you all. Some of you have met, some of you have not met. Hopefully I get the chance to meet uh, some of you after the session. But however it goes, uh, we come uh, for no other reason to share with you what uh, thus said the Lord. Amen. Amen. And if you allow me, I'm just going to, I know we pray, but I just want to go to God once again in prayer, if you don't mind. Father God, we just give you praise, honor, and glory for this day. God, we thank you for, once again, for this opportunity to stand in your presence. And God, if you be able to speak as you uh, will allow us to speak. We ask you now, that God, that you forgive us any sins and shortcomings, God, that you, God, will cleanse us, God, from all unrighteousness and all iniquity. Now, God, as we come, God, to stand before the people who ask you to speak, God, we hide behind the cross and let you speak. In the name of Jesus, and we give you the praise, honor, and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 As it has been mentioned this morning, our topic of conversation is today is once saved, always saved. Or should I put it in question form, is it once saved, always saved? And I know we've heard that term and heard that terminology uh, at some point in time in all of our lives as it pertains to salvation. Uh, as it pertains to salvation, once a person receives their salvation, is it possible for one to lose their salvation? That's kind of what we want to talk about today. That's kind of some of the things we want to uh, kind of bring to light. Is it possible? Can one lose their salvation? Is the question. So I'm kind of putting, trying to put this in question form. Is it once saved, always saved? Now, again, um, I want to kind of break it down, uh, and I'm going to be very brief if I possibly can. But I'm going to kind of break it down in three different uh, uh, mentalities, if you will. Uh, we want to talk about getting, losing, and sustaining as it pertains to salvation. Getting, we'll talk about how to get your salvation, getting salvation. We're going to talk about that. We're also going to talk about losing salvation. And we're also going to talk about sustaining salvation. Okay, so we're going to deal with those three different entities as it pertains to our subject today. Uh, first of all, what are we saved, what is a person saved from? Let's kind of talk about that for a minute. What are we saved from? Now, we all know that the Bible speaks that sin is the transgression of the law. So every, when a person comes into the knowledge that they have sinned, that they have done wrong, that they have transgressed God's law, from that point on, we are under the penalty of death. The Bible says, Romans 6.23, for the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So once we have transgressed the law of Jesus Christ, that penalty of death is on us. Now, when we say death, we mean the spiritual death. Physical death as well, but also more or less, the spirit, more so, I would say, the spiritual death. 
So once a person realized that, it's me in particular, and realized that we are sinners or we were sinners, then we have to know we have to be saved or God brought his son for us to be saved from the wrath that is to come. So to be saved from the wrath that is to come, Jesus Christ came, died, he died, he bled, he died, he was buried, and he rose again the third day to become the sacrifice for our sin. That way the sin, if we accept him, the sin or the penalty, I should say, of sin and death has, can be possibly taken off of us if we so uh, choose to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Uh, so let's talk about how do we get salvation. How does one attain salvation? We want to set the foundation on how does one get saved or become saved. We want to go to the scriptures and we're going to let the Bible speak. Uh, let's turn to, if you will, be so kind, John 3.16. We want to go to St. John chapter 3. We want to kind of start there. Uh, St. John chapter 3 and verse 16. Very familiar passage of scripture, but we want to shed uh, a little bit more light because we've heard it time and time again uh, throughout our lives. This very familiar passage of scripture, but we want to read it and just get a clear understanding of what we are saved from. John 3 and 16 reads, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So God gave his only son, Jesus Christ, to come and die. Uh, he hung on the cross, bled, died, was buried, was raised the third day. After that, the plan of God's plan of salvation was complete. Now it's available to anyone that wants to receive him. As we say, as the Bible says, whoever shall believe in him shall not perish, but not have a life to life. It's not just him that believe, not just to believe on him that he exists, but not to believe also his words, his commandments, his requisites for salvation. I think that sometimes the, uh, the misconception is all we have to do is believe. Well, James, of course, uh, refutes that because he says the devils believe and tremble. Is that correct? Amen. So therefore, the devils believe, but we know the devil will not obey. We know the devil will not repent. And we know the devil will not follow Christ. So therefore, to believe is one thing. And James is saying, and he's very clear when he says that. He says, you have done well when you believe. He said, but also, he gives a contrast. Also, the devils believe in Trump. So when we, when we look at the text here, he said, whoever shall believe in him shall not perish. That means believe, not believe in what Jesus said. Believe in what Jesus commanded. And that's going to tie into our next uh, scripture, Mark 16. Let's go to Mark 16. Excuse me, Mark 16, verse 15 and 16. We talk about getting salvation. We kind of want to stay with the narrative. How do we attain salvation? How do we get salvation? In order to get salvation, we can't talk about losing it unless we know how to get it. Amen. So Mark 16, once again, very familiar passage of scripture. Mark 16, and we're going to go to verse 15. Uh, we're going to start verse 15. And he said, unto him, talking about Jesus, go unto ye, to, go ye into all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved, but he that believeth not shall be damned. Again, this is another scripture that we uh, can use and we can live by that uh, he that believeth a person, when we tell a person, he that, when they ask the, ask the question, well, how, how, how do I get saved? How do I get put into Christ? Well, we can go to this scripture again and say, he that believeth, quote to Jesus, say, he that believeth, that's the faith, and is baptized. Word and is joining one or two more things together. When you see one word, another word, you have the conjunction. I, I, I grew up on Schoolhouse Rock, and that's how I learned about. That's how I learned about uh, conjunction. I remember conjunction, junction. I learned about prepositional phrases, and I learned about adjectives and verbs and all of those type of things. So I know what kind of know what the word and means, brother. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Verb was my favorite. Okay. But however, so. The word and joins one or two more things together. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. So that's how we attain salvation in that life. Our third scripture we're going to do is going to use to prove how we get it. Acts chapter 2, verse 37 and 38. Acts chapter 2, verse 37 and 38. We're going to listen to the apostle Peter as he's standing before about 3,000 souls. He, they asked the question in verse 37, as we read here. It says, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart, meaning they were convicted. 
and says unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, men and brethren, what shall we do? So they know there was something that had to be done besides believing in order to bring them into Christ or to save them. Peter gives them the answer in verse 38. Then Peter said unto them, repent. And be baptized. There's that word again. And be baptized, every one of you, in the name of Jesus Christ, which means simply means on the authority of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. So we can use these three. There are very there are more that we can use, but uh, these three. Well, it, it tells us how one gets the salvation, how we get salvation from Christ. Now, we want to get into kind of to the meat of our, 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 our teaching and our thought for today about losing salvation. A lot of people, when I was in the denominational church as I stayed for 45 years, I was taught that you can never lose your salvation. Once you're in Christ and once uh, you accept Jesus Christ as your Savior, as it was presented to me at that time, uh, it was taught to me, brother, that you can never lose it. You know, once you're in Christ, you're always in Christ. Why would God give us a gift and then take it back? You know, I, was, I grew up uh, uh, when we were children. Uh, they, they taught, uh, uh, you know, I learned a, a little thing called Indian giving. And uh, some of you guys might have heard she's laughing. So a lot of people might have heard about that. Uh, Indian giver says it's, it, it, it relates to a fact that if I was to give you something, uh, if I chose to take it back from you, I could very well do that. Meaning that what I gave to you was, I gave it to you, but I gave it to you on a condition or whatever the case may be. But the idea is I can come back and get it, which means it's not exactly a gift, so it's an Indian gift. I don't know if the Indians really did it like that, but that's just kind of how I grew up on it. I just, you know, we, we just took it and ran with it. But however it goes, the idea was, or the teaching of never losing your salvation, God wouldn't give us a gift. And then take it back. Well, that's true. That is true. God gives us the gift of salvation. But let's talk about how we lose it. Well, if you was to give me $100, Brother Green, you gave it to me. It's a gift. You never took it back. You give it to me. You don't have any intentions of giving it back. But if I decide to give it back to you, you see what I'm saying? If I decide to give it, well, it's no longer a gift to me because I, I gave it back. So the idea about losing salvation, yes, it, salvation is a free gift. It is given to us. It's given to every person that chooses to receive it through the scriptures that we just read. But at the same time, it's because a person loses salvation. You can, it's very possible it can happen. It's because we give it back. Let's prove it. Let's go to an Old Testament scripture, 2 Chronicles. We'll go to 2 Chronicles chapter 15. Now, I'm going to lay a foundation with this because this is kind of the crux of our teaching today. About one, uh, is it one saved, always saved, or can one lose their salvation? Second Chronicles, chapter 15. We're going to go there in the Old Testament. Second Chronicles, chapter 15. And we're going to look at verse number 2. This is where the prophet Azariah went to King Asa, who was the third king of Judah. And uh, God allowed him to go prophesy to King Asa. We're going to start with verse 1. Let's go let's back up to verse 1. 2 Chronicles chapter 15 and verse 1. It says that the Spirit of God came upon Azariah, the son of Oded. Verse 2 says, And he went out to meet Asa and said unto him, Hear me, Asa, and all Judah and Benjamin. The Lord is with you while ye be with him. If you seek him, he will be found of you. But if ye forsake him, he will forsake you. So what is the scriptures teaching us here? It says the Lord is with us as long as we're with him. Uh, I, 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 I listen to Brother Stevenson and, and uh, Brother, and I listen to that broadcast pretty much, you know, every week. And uh, the idea is I hear those brothers always teach and it helps me a lot because that's why I'm bringing it up. It says, the Lord is with you while you be with him. Now, again, the idea, when I hear Brother Stevenson and those brothers talk, they have taught me something about this scripture. While, if, if a person comes to God, if a person comes to God and they stay with God and never leave God, not saying they're not going to make any mistakes, not saying that they may fall short of some things, not saying they're going to slip up sometimes. 
But the idea is staying with God is the prerequisite of what we're saying. Staying with God. If I, if I have my child, my son, when my kids were little, when I would hold their hand and I would walk with them, my little my little two year old or my little toddler that uh, God blessed me to have, they would even while I was holding their hand, leading them, they would stumble. You know, they hit the knee, stumble, they get back up. They stumble, they get back up. But the idea is they still held my hand. I never let them go. So the idea is as long as we're following God, if you, if you be with God, he'll be with you. Even if we stumble, our hand is still held on to God. He didn't break away from me, I didn't break away from him. Long as he held on to me, he was able to still get up and continue to walk. So therefore, the idea is, as we see here, verse 2, the Lord is with you while you be with him. And if you seek him, he will be found of you. That sounds pretty good. But the contrast is, but if you forsake him, meaning if you leave him, if we leave him. Now, God never left us because Jesus promises, Lord, I am with you, Matthew 28, all the way till the end of the world. But if we forsake him, the Bible says he will forsake us. It's very clear. It's very plain in that scripture alone that tells us if we forsake God, God is going to forsake us. Amen. Second Peter chapter 2, verses 20 through 21. We're going to explain further. Second Peter chapter 2. Now, this is, this is one I try to help a lot of people on. Because, again, when I, when I was in the denominational church, uh, again, they, and, and one thing about it, this scripture has been abused a lot. It has been falsely taught. It has been wrongly divided uh, as it relates to it. I mean, we're going to explain why when we get there. Second Peter chapter 2. 2 Peter chapter 2, and we're going to begin at verse 20. 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 20. It says, for if after they have escaped, the they is the people that have, the ones that have, have, have repented, have obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ, have received Jesus Christ as their Savior, have been baptized. For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world, through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, they are again entangled therein. That means that again, they have went back. This is talking about those that have went back. They have tasted of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. They experienced salvation. They have their sins washed away. Then Peter says they are again entangled therein and overcome. What did he say? The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. That sounds like to me that a person may is probably definitely lost their salvation. That's what it sounds like to me. I'm going to read it again. They are entangled again and overcome the latter end. If they are entangled again, now when he says overcome, they're overcome with sin. They're overcome with the things they went back. They overcome again with the world. They're overcome with transgressions again. They're overcome with that meaning that they overcome with that and they die. That, that's, that, that's the, that's the, that's kind of the, the end result. When you're overcome by something, that, that something has taken you over. Amen. When you're overcome with it. Okay? So the idea is, Peter is teaching us, they, they were overcome by the sin that they went back into. He says what? The latter end is worse with them than the beginning. And then in verse 21, he's going to tell us why. For it had been better for them not to have known the way. Did we see that? It had been better for them to not know the way of righteousness than after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment delivered unto them. Once again, that is further proof that it's very possible for me and anybody else to obey the gospel. If I develop the gospel of Jesus Christ and decide to go back in the world, stop back sinning, stop back fornicating, stop back drinking, stop back getting high, and get back into that lifestyle. And I say if I do it and did it and I repented, I would still be saved because I turned from it. I just spoke of that a little bit earlier. But if I was to get back out there and do those things, my brother, and went back out there and then been overcome and die, and I obey the gospel. I've obeyed the gospel of Jesus Christ. I've obeyed the gospel, but I went back into sin. I went back to get entangled with those things that I've been delivered from. If we talk about uh, we, uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 6, verse 9, we can use that as a reference as well. All those things that we have been uh, washed from. But if we're washed from those things, but turn, it's almost like something my father used to say. He used an analogy of a pig. Okay? If that pig, you take him out of the state. Right, or wherever he is, in the hog pen, or whatever you call it, okay? 
I'm not from the South, so I may be saying it wrong. Some of you country, maybe some of you country people may have. But anyway, however it goes, the hog that's in the pen, the pig that's in the pig, pig, the pig style, whatever. He's dirty. He's in there. He's dirty. I go and I take him. I rescue him from the filth and the dirt that he's wallowing in. I clean him up. I put a suit on him. I wash him down real good. I put a suit on him. But if he chose back to go back to that lifestyle again or go back to that hog pen and get dirty again and then he stays there, well, be, the whole part of him being clean was, well, me washing him was a moot, was a moot point. It was, it was almost in vain the way I did it if that's what he chose to do to go back into it. Now, we know that's the pig's nature. Of course, the nature have to be changed. But at the same time, my analogy is if we go back and get overcome, like the scripture said, that's why verse 21 is so strong. For it had been better for them than not to know. It had been better for a person not to even know. That's what God says. Not even know what? The way of righteousness then after they have known it to turn from the holy commandment. Again, much is given, much is required. So if we come into that light and decide to turn back, yes, the Bible scriptures teaching us we can very well lose our salvation. Another scripture we can use is Hebrews chapter 3. Let's turn to Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 12. Again, um, and again, we hear this doctrine that's being taught mainly in denominational churches that once you come to, you know, you come down and you give the preacher your hand and you give God's heart and yeah, like I said, they already teach salvation wrong. Give you God, give you God, how preaching you may be. Pray the prayer of salvation. Repeat some prayer after some man or some woman, and you're saved. We already know, we know that not to be true according to the scriptures we just read earlier. But at the same time, uh, when, 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 we, when we hear the call and we come to the call, they, or that call, when they come to that call, I'm saying, they will tell them, at that point, you're sealed. We're going to deal with that scripture too. You never can lose your salvation. Well, let's go to Hebrews chapter 12, as we said. Hebrews chapter 3. Excuse me, I'm sorry. Hebrews chapter 3 and verse 12. I'm sorry. Chapter 3 and verse 12 says, Take heed, brethren, lest there be any of you an evil heart of belief, doing what? In belief. I'm sorry, brother. Thank you. In departing from the living God. So just that one verse. Let's be any of you, any of you, an evil heart of belief in parting from the living God. Now, again, there are a lot of things. Once we come into belief, there's a lot of things that can turn a person's belief against God. A lot of things that can turn a person's belief. You can get, uh, I'll use the analogy of uh, uh, two people getting married. Uh, and one, one may be a Christian, obey the gospel. Well, the other may be, uh, say, a Muslim. Okay. Well, if you get into that marriage and the one that obeyed the gospel, who is the Christian, can be swayed from their unbelief because they may they love that partner so much, there they may try to turn and press their beliefs on the Christian. And because of the love that they that's why it's dangerous not to be unequally yoked. So therefore, if that happens, that person that's not in the Lord, that is in a false doctrine or a false church or a false religion, it's very possible they can turn their belief to unbelief because of the love they may have for them. I've seen, I actually have seen that happen. Uh, two people that are in two different quote unquote religions, or maybe a Christian married a Jehovah's Witness, or a Christian married a Catholic, or a Christian married a Methodist, whatever the case may be. It is very possible that that person can turn that other person away from God. As the scripture says back in unbelief and departing from the living God. So that's another scripture that proves that. Revelation chapter 2. Let's go to Revelation chapter 2 verses 1 through 5. Revelation, again, as we can see, there are, there are so many, the Bible has so much information and so much proof that it is very possible for one to lose their salvation. And these are just four scriptures that I've read. Revelation chapter 2. And we're going to go to verse number one. Uh, this is Jesus talking to the church at Ephesus. Uh, we're going to cite verse one. He said, unto the angel of the, of the church of Ephesus write, these things said he that holdeth the seven stars in his right hand, who walketh in the midst of the seven golden candlesticks. Verse two said, Jesus said, I know thy works, and thy labor, and thy patience, how thou cannot bear them which are evil, and thou hast tried them which say they are apostles, and are not. And has found them liars, and has borne, verse 3, and has patience, and for my name's sake, 
has labored and has not finished. So he's commending this church. He's commending them on the good things that they're doing. They, you know, they, uh, he knows their labor. He knows their patience. He can't bear them. They don't eat. He, Jesus is really complimenting them. But let's look at verse 4. He says, Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because what? Thou hast left thy first love. I think we just spoke of that about leaving. So you left it. In this case, that first love is Christ, because in this context, as we look, thou hast left thy first love. But remember, verse 5, Therefore wilt thou have fallen. Now he's giving them, that's what the goodness of God, now he's giving uh, these church space to get it right. He says, remember, from there they have fallen and repent and do the first works. Now, he's, that's the one thing. That's the goodness of God. He always will give us a chance. Even those that may have turned away, he's still going to give them a chance to come back. Okay? So let's look at the rest of verse 5. Or, now again, there's always a contrast with Jesus. Jesus will always give you one side, but he's going to give, also give you the other side. So, or else I will come unto thee quickly. And what will he do? I and will remove thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Yeah. That scripture alone tells me right there that, that, that you, you can very lose your place with Jesus. Amen. Right there. He said, or else. Now he's giving them space. He said, he's commending this church at Ephesus on the good things that they're doing. But he said, there's some things that now we're talking about. Now, this is pretty much going to those that are in the church, those that already made the gospel. He's saying to them, repent, do the first works, or I will come unto thee quickly, and I will remove. That's that word. I will remove. Remove is meaning to take away. Simply. Thou candlestick out, thy candlestick out of his place, except thou repent. Now, if there is any, any, if there is any question that this is true. Now Jesus is saying this. <laughs> this is our Lord and Savior saying this. Because it's bold here in red. Amen. So Jesus is saying. If you don't get it right. Or if you fall away. He said you left your first love. You left me. He said return. He's giving us space. Isn't God good that he gives us. He gives us time and space to repent. He loves us that much. The Bible says it's not God's will that any man should perish. But that all come to repentance. Amen. But at the same time, there's a contrast. If we don't do that, it's very, it's very clear that we will be lost. Amen. Last scripture, and we're talking about losing still. John 15, St. John 15, verse 6. We'll go back to St. John. John 15 and verse 6. Again, it is very possible. Uh, we're proving that by scripture. It's very possible that one can lose their salvation in Christ. John 15, we're going to look at verse 6. Jesus said, If a man abideth not in me, he is cast forth as a branch, and is withered. And men gather them, cast them into the fire, and they are burned. So again, further proof. We not, but we don't buy, abide in Christ. He says, If a man abideth not in me. Let's look at verse 5. Let's back up verse 5 again. There's another contrast. I am the vine, you are the branches. He that abided in me and I in him, the same corporate bring forth much fruit, but without me you can do nothing. Okay? Verse 6 again. Let's look at the contrast again. If, you, uh, if a man not abided not in me, he is cast forth as a branch in his wood. And men gather them and cast them in the fire, and they are burned. So again, very possible. For one to lose their salvation if they don't abide in Christ, if we don't stay key to Christ. Not saying again, we're not going to make any mistakes, make any shortcomings, but the idea is to abide in Him, stay Amen. with Him, remain with Him. Amen. Amen. Uh, that's the requisite. Amen. Now, in saying about getting, then saying about losing. Well, once we get our salvation, we don't want to worry about losing it. Amen. We don't want to bother. He that endure to the end shall save, shall be saved. So let's talk about sustaining our last, uh, our last mindset. Sustaining our salvation. How do one? How does we, us that are members of the Lord's church, those that have obeyed the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ, how do we sustain our salvation? Well, we know we can get it. Now, we know it's very possible according to the scriptures. Now that we can lose it. Well, in saying those two things, how do we sustain? It? Amen. Matthew chapter 24. We're going to turn there. Matthew chapter 24, verse 1. 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 Matth
verses 12 and 13. Matthew chapter 24, verses 12 and 13. Jesus speaks, looking at verse 12, he says, And because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. Verse 13, but he that endureth until the end, the same shall be saved. So Jesus is telling us, let's we endure. We endure all the way to the end. Don't give up. Don't fall. Don't, don't give. Don't give up. Don't quit. Endure until the end. Yes, we've got to go through some things. We're going to endure trials, temptations, all of those things. But he said, he that you got to endure all that. He said, if you endure all of those things, he said, if you get to the end, you shall be saved. So that's one way we sustain it. We have to endure, amen. We have to go through, amen. We have to keep going. We have to keep marching. We have to keep obeying. We have to keep trusting. All those things. We have to keep praying, amen. We have to keep uh, edifying one another. That's why I thank God for these brothers. Like Brother, Brother Green called me up. I sometimes I'm like, man, Brother Green called me again. He just started talking to me about something. But Brother Green, he's one. If I ever was to go back and think that I was going to go back and be, go back into the world, he, this brother right here, would not let me. <laughs> he calls me almost every day. Amen. Brother Joyce, I just want to talk to you. But I say, yeah, yeah, I'm done. And we're on the phone for three hours. <laughs> but I thank God for brothers like that. But that's part of it, amen? Amen. We are our brother's keeper. Amen. We, 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 that's what we are to do. We are to keep our brothers. We, you know, we are to edify one another. That's what the Bible teaches us to do, to edify. That's the beauty of sustaining. That's the beauty. That's a good, that's a good example of sustaining yourself. Because a lot of people, we get into a situation where we feel alone. We feel by ourselves. We feel that, man, this, this journey gets hard. It, it gets rough. Am I talking to anybody today? It gets hard. It gets rough. But thank God we have brothers and sisters in Christ. And what we ought to do that with our fellow brother, just to call him and say, hey, I was just thinking about you today. Matter of fact, this scripture brought me to your mind. Oh, my. Your, me to your mind. Oh, well, your mind to me. Y'all know what I'm saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Brought them to my mind. Amen. Brought you to my mind, right? Is that what I'm saying? Okay. So, the idea, the idea is that part of our enduring is being able for us to encourage each other. Amen. John chapter 8, verse 31. We're talking about sustaining now. John chapter 8 and verse 31. These are scriptures we can definitely always refer to. Uh, just, just to kind of just keep reminding and keep renewing our minds to our walk with Christ and why we should stay with Christ and why it's important for us to stay with Christ. John chapter 8, verse 31. Then Jesus said unto the Jews which believed on him, If ye continue in my word, then ye are my disciples indeed. Key word, continue. Verse 32, And ye shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Amen. So we look at verse 31, Jesus said, If you continue. That's right. So that's how we sustain. We have to continue. Right. We can't just read one day or just live for him one day, and then any other day we just, you know, we shun Jesus. No, we have to continue in his word. Continue means to constantly move forward, to constantly keep going. If we continue in the word, he said, then you are my disciples of me. You are my disciples if you continue. Amen. First Corinthians chapter 15, verse, verses 57 and 58. First Corinthians chapter 15, verses 57 and 58. We have another example. Amen. Verse Corinthians chapter 15. We're going to look at verse 57. It reads here. But thanks be to God which give us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, my brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable, always, key word, always, always abounding in the work of the Lord. So that's one of my favorites when it comes to me uh, sustaining my salvation requires that I am to be steadfast. I'm, all, I'm, I'm not supposed to ever give up. I got to stand. Amen. The Bible teaches us to stand in the book of Ephesians. Put on the arm of God that you may be able to stand. So we're, it's encouraging us to be steadfast, not to be unmoved. Don't let things move you. So many saints of God let things, let the cares of this world move them. 
See, though, that can happen too. The devil, see, the devil is very cunning. You know that? The devil is very skillful. He's very cunning. He knows those things and those buttons that can be pushed that may cause us to be unmovable and cause things to move us in this life. But the Bible teaches us, be, um, he said, be unmovable. Don't let the devil move you. How do we do that? Stay in the word. Constantly pray. Stay in the scriptures. Amen. Because constantly leaning on God to be unmoving. Again, always abounding. Always abounding. In the work of the Lord. Why? For as much as you know that your labor is not in vain. And that's, that's the encouraging part. No matter what we go through, if we sustain with Jesus, our labor is not going to be in vain. When we get to the end, we can stand before God justified, knowing that we, we, we remain steadfast. We remain immovable. We will always abound, amen, in the work of the Lord. Amen. Second Peter chapter 1, verse 10. We're almost done. Second Peter chapter 1 and verse 10. Amen. This is, these are uh, scriptures, again, that's proving that if we sustain our walk with God, then we will be saved. 2 Peter chapter 1, verse 10. Looking at verse 10, it says, Wherefore the rather, brother, give diligence to make your calling and election sure. For if you do these things, ye shall never fall. So what is Peter teaching us? He's teaching us that uh, we're making our calling and election sure. Again, just what, almost what we just read in the previous uh, scripture. He said, For if you do these things, you shall never fall. If we remain steadfast in those things that Peter is talking about, we shall never fall. Make our calling sure. Make it sure. Stand on it. Amen. Make it sure. For if you do it, we won't fall. But it takes sustaining in that so we won't fall. Amen. It takes doing those things. Our last scripture again, we're going to go back to the book of Revelation. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Amen. Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. And also, you can hold that and also get Revelation chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. So we're going to stay in the book of Revelation. And these scriptures here, Revelation chapter 2, verse 10, will be very familiar. It says, For none of these things we shall shall suffer. Revelation 2, chapter 10, or excuse me, chapter 2, verse 10. Fear none of, the, none of those things which shall thou shalt suffer. Behold, the devil shall cast some of you into prison, that you may be tried. You shall have tribulation ten days. But, this is what he says, Be thou faithful unto death, and I will give thee a crown of life. Again, Jesus is teaching us to stand. Be faithful. Keep going. Don't give up. Amen. Make your salvation. Make your calling sure. Revelation chapter, let's skip over to verse 3. Excuse me. Chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. Revelation chapter 3, verses 4 and 5. Thou hast been Thou has a few names, even in Sardis, which have not uh, defiled their garments. And they shall walk with me in white, for they are worthy. He that overcometh, which again, overcome. You have to overcome in his life. He that overcometh, the same shall be clothed. See, look at, look at, look at the reward that we're going to get. Look at the contrast. The same shall be clothed in white in raiment. Sounds pretty good to me. Amen. And I will not blot out his name. Out of the book of life. But what is Jesus going to do if we keep going? If we remain faithful? He says, but I will confess his name before my father and before his angels. Amen. Amen. That sounds like pretty good news. Amen. Amen. If we hold on, like the, like the older saints used to say, just hold on. If we hold on to God's unchanging hand, like the song that Brother Stevenson, amen, just sung, let us in. Hold on to God's unchanging hand. Never give up. Remain steadfast. Amen. Amen. Unmovable. Amen. Always abounding in the work of the Lord. Amen. Then uh, our salvation, we will sustain that. And then at the end, again, like I said earlier, we stand before God justified. We can stand before him in confidence. Amen. Knowing that we endured all the way until the end. Amen. 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 Now, one thing before we close, there's been some mixed conceptions about the never losing. There's some, and, 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 deep, and when I get to this part, preachers have taught probably the same scriptures that we're teaching now, but it's misconception with that. The Bible says we are to rightly divide the word of truth. So these scriptures that we're going to go through now 
have been wrongly divided to make a person think that they can never lose. First one we're going to talk about is John chapter 10. Now when I studied this last night, I was like, wow, God, this is remarkable. John chapter 10 and verse 27. Now this is a misconception. We're going to talk about the misconception now of once saved, always saved. All right? John chapter 10. We're going to look at verse 27. John chapter 10, verse 27 reads. Okay? Reads, my sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. And I will give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any pluck them out of my hand. Now that has been taught that the part that when Jesus said, never shall any man pluck them out of my hand, meaning this has been taught wrong because they're saying, well, okay, nobody can pluck them out of hand. You can never lose your salvation because nobody can pluck you out of Jesus' hand. Nobody can do that. Nobody can do that. But let's look at verse 27. The, the, the thing about studying and rightly dividing scripture, you can't take one scripture and create a doctrine. We cannot take one scripture. That's what false teachers do. They take one scripture, just like Romans 10 and 9, for example, create a whole entire doctrine and take the scripture completely out of its context. So the, the scripture that's been taken out of context as it pertains to never leaving salvation is verse 28. Read it again. And I give them eternal life, and they shall never perish, neither shall any but. See right there, it says, can nobody pluck you out of Jesus' hand? You'll be saved always. But wait a minute. Did you read verse 27? Verse 27 says, and my sheep hear my voice. My sheep, those that belong to me, they hear me. They hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me. So therefore, what is saying this, if we follow Christ, if we now again, he said they know me and they follow me. Well, what's going to happen if we don't follow? We're going to lose. We're, gonna, we're not going to be saved. So if you look at verse 28, that's one of the misconceptions that's being taught in a wrong way that when Jesus said nobody, neither any man plucked them out of my hand. Well, that's only because we hear his voice and we follow. You have to read the verse before. Amen. Amen. So let's go again. That's one misconception. Ephesians chapter 4 verse 30. Let's look at the other wrongly taught uh, scripture and the misconception that you cannot lose it. Ephesians chapter 4 and verse 30. We're almost done. But Ephesians, we're going to bring this out really fast. Ephesians chapter 4, amen, and verse 30. It reads, And grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, where, whereby ye are sealed until the day of redemption. Have you heard that? Well, you're sealed. You're forever sealed. You can never, you can never lose salvation because you're sealed in Christ. No matter what you do. Did you hear what I just said? No matter what you do, you can even say I heard a preacher yesterday when I was watching on YouTube. He taught, and, I, I, and this is nowhere in the scripture, but he taught that, uh, once you're saved, listen to me close. Once you're saved, we already read the scripture, but I just want to share this with you. Once you're saved, uh, and you happen to, uh, Brother Nick, go back into some sin. Okay? Like we talked about earlier. You happen to go back into sin. Well, even if you go back into sin and die in that sin, it was taught that, first of all, you, God is not going to uh, condemn you to hell because of your seal until the day of redemption. Misconception. Number two is that only thing that you are going to lose if you die in that state is your reward. That's, That's what I said. <laughs> and I was like, you know, some things you don't even have to go to the scripture to find out. Some things, like what we were talking about, some things is just common sense. We know, again, the Bible says the soul that sinned shall surely die. So if, 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 if we're sealed, how can you... I mean, it's, it, to me, it's just, I can't even, it's just confusing to me to know for a person to try to tell me that if I go back into sin, well, I already know the scripture said, I go back into sin, I die in sin, I, I'm still going to be saved. Only thing I'm going to lose is my reward with Christ. Really. Very ridiculous. Again, very, very, very misconceiving and misleading. Okay? So when we hear that, 
Again, we got to be free, but we have to rightly divide it. So how do we rightly divide it? The Bible said, and grieve not the Holy See, that's just right there. They could have flunked out because you didn't even read the first line. And grieve not the Holy Spirit. So when we sin and we do things are wrong, we are grieving the Spirit of God. The Spirit of God won't leave the believer unless, of course, let's return. But the Spirit of God is not going. We can live with the Spirit of God leave us. But the thing is, the Bible instructs us not to grieve it. So therefore, if I was to sin, I'm grieving the Holy Spirit. And also, uh, which is the, the same Holy Spirit is sealing me. So if I'm sinning, I'm grieving. God is not taking the spirit from me. Of course, I have to repent of it. But God won't take his spirit from me. But, but I can still grieve the spirit by the wrong things that I do. But it's not telling me that I'm going to be constantly sealed even if I go back into sin and die in sin. That's not what that scripture means. That scripture means whereby, you say grieve, not the Holy Spirit, whereby. See, that's the word that they're missing. Whereby ye are sealed. Until the day of redemption. Uh, so it's teaching us let's not sin or not fall into sin or constantly sin or willingly sin to grieve the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit is sealing us until that day comes. If we remain in Christ. Amen. So it's not just, it's not, a, it's not a, again, it's been a false teaching that if we are, we're, we're sealed until the day of redemption, no matter what we do, which is false. Amen. Amen. John chapter 5, verse 24, we're going to close. John chapter 5, verse 24. Another miscon misconception of uh, you, can all, you can never lose it. John chapter 5 and verse 24. And then we're going to hold that and we're going to stay in John. We want you to pick up John chapter 6, verse 37. John chapter 5, verse 24. And we're hurrying. John chapter 5, verse 24. Read. Looking at verse 24, it says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, He that hear my word and believeth on him that sent me hath everlasting life, and shall not come into condemnation, but is passed from death unto life. Again, it this has been taught, okay, you hear my word, you believe, you believe on me, you have everlasting life, you shall never come into condemnation. There's no condemnation that you can ever come into because of the fact that you believe on him. If you hear my words, you believe on him, you have everlasting life, I've never been taken away from him. I've heard that talk, that that can never happen. Wrong, false, false, false. Because again, you didn't look at verse 23 before you went to that. Verse 23 says that all men should honor the Son. How do we honor the Son? By obeying Him. By staying faithful. We read that earlier. That's how we honor God. Even as they honor the Father. That all men should honor the Son. Even they honor the Father. He that honors not the Son, uh, honors not the Father which hath sent Him. So we people just look at a word and just take it at face value. But honoring means obeying. Again, honoring means being steadfast. We read that. Honoring means being unmovable. That's how we're honoring Jesus. Honoring, being unmovable. All of those things. We're honoring God in that life. And it is not just because we have everlasting life. Just the word everlasting is, what, is what's being taught wrong. You're taking that word everlasting again. You have created a doctrine. Well, because it's everlasting, God can never, you can, God can, will never take it away from you. But again, like we proved earlier, we can take it from our sins. God, yes, God will never take salvation away from us. We take it from ourselves. We give it back to him. Amen. So what are we saying in totality? What we say in totality is, yes, as we proved by scripture, it is very possible for one to lose uh, their salvation. It's not God's will that any man should perish. It's not God's will. God wants, God wants every man and woman on this earth to be saved. But at the same time, that person has to be willing to obey the gospel of Jesus Christ, as we read in Acts chapter 2, verses 37 to 38. Uh, he has to remain faithful. Once he does that, he or she has to remain faithful as it pertains to Revelation chapter 2, verse 10. Uh, God has the plan mapped out. All we have to do is stay in the road. Amen? Stay on the path. Amen. So, saints, what we encourage you today, uh, first of all, we have enough to know now. Not saying you didn't know, but the Bible said our minds have to be renewed. There's a lot of things in Christ. So while the minds are being renewed this morning, that let's stay steadfast. Amen. Let's stay removable. Let's not give up. 
Yes, problems will come your way. I just I read into some this morning just getting here. <laughs> Amen. But at the same time, did it deter me? No, it didn't. I kept I stayed faithful. I didn't let it I didn't let it bother me, sister. I stayed faithful. I said, God, I know you're gonna make a way out of the situation. And that's exactly what he did. Why? Because my mind said, God knows the heart. God knows our intentions, he knows our hearts, he knows our thoughts. He knows that I very much wanted to be here, that I wasn't gonna let anything stop. But that was because I won't remain faithful to you. Amen. So we all do that. That does not go just for me. It goes for all those that love Jesus. And all those that have God for Jesus Christ members of the Lord's church. Uh, let's stay faithful and knowing that, uh, and I don't think no one here, I don't think none of us will fall that category. If they do, please give me a call and I'll come way back into Nashville <laughs> and, and pull you up and help pick you up if you decide to turn back on your salvation. Amen? Amen? Amen. So we give God the glory. We give God the praise. We hope something has been said uh, this morning. Uh, that have encouraged our hearts as we talk of this subject. Once saved, always saved. Uh, as we know now, it is not once saved, always saved. Amen? Amen. We know that now. So, uh, but we give God glory. We give God praise. Uh, uh, before I open up the questions, my brother, um, uh, I never take it for granted that everybody in a building or room that I am is have obeyed the gospel is saved. So we just moving on. If that's okay. Uh, that's okay to extend yeah. the invitation. Yeah. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so uh, we want to extend an invitation to someone here that, uh, if you don't know, uh, we all here are going to die. The Bible says the point of the man who died in the judgment. It's all appointed to every man to die. If, if you're here today, if you don't know where you're going, if you have doubts about where you're going when you die, well, Jesus said, I come that you might have life and that you may have more God's more read or well, how the person attained this salvation. First of all, we hear the gospel, the death, burial, resurrection of Jesus Christ. Jesus died on the cross, sent by God to be sacrificed for our sin. He died on the cross, he was buried, and raised again the third day. That's the gospel of Jesus Christ. So when we hear that, believe that, we believe that, then we confess Jesus Christ as Lord. He is the Son of God. He was the one that God sent uh, to be the, uh, be the sacrifice for our sins. Then once we hear that, we hear the gospel. We believe the gospel. Then we repent of our sins. We be godly sorrow for things that we have done in our lives. The sins that we have killed. Like we said earlier, sin is the transgression of the law. So we're very, then we become very sorry. We repent. We turn. We turn in heart and mind and also in action. Uh, repent. Once we repent, then we are baptized. As we read in Acts chapter 2, verse 37. And also Matthew chapter 19, verses 20. Acts chapter 2, verses 30. We're washed when we repent. Baptism saves us. Baptism, once we're baptized, uh, God, we do the physical act, God does the spiritual act. When we are baptized, we're baptized to get our sins washed away. Our sins are washed away. We go down in water, we come up, God does the spiritual act, cutting away the sin. Brings us in contact with the blood of Jesus that our sins are taken away. Then from that point, then we live faithful as we just talked about. Faithful Jesus Christ. So if there's anyone here today that have not obeyed Jesus Christ and say, I want to be saved, I want to, I want to repent, I want to turn from the life. If there's nothing that God will not forgive you of. God's hand is not too short to forgive any sin. It doesn't matter what we've done, it doesn't matter how we did it. God can is able to save us today. So if there's anyone here who give their life to Jesus Christ, they're going to be extended the opportunity this morning at this time. What can wash away my sins? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious is that flow that makes me white as snow. the blood of Jesus, all the good that I have done, nothing but the blood of Jesus, oh precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Amen. Amen. Once again, we thank God for the opportunity to thank uh, Brother Green once again for uh, allowing me the opportunity to come and speak to the saints of God. Uh, and even all those that had a hand in putting this together, I thank you so much. I am very grateful uh, that I was able to come here and have an opportunity to share uh, with all of you. Amen. Amen. Uh, now we're going to open it up uh, to any questions uh, that one might have concerning uh, our topic today or any other topic uh, in that matter uh, at this time. So we'll open up for questions. I think we're going to call for this hand. Like you said, brother, uh, uh, you know, uh, there, there are a lot of us, a lot of those, I would say, that have, like you said, obeyed the gospel, but they feel that's all you need to do. That's enough. That should just be enough. Well, I obeyed the gospel. I'm saved. I can stop right there. And I can just live any type of way I want to. No, we have to teach, teach uh, how to grow. Jesus said, take my yoke upon me and learn of me. So therefore, we have to teach. I'm not saying that we're not doing it, but we have to continue to teach and continue to teach those saints, uh, those that are, especially those, as you mentioned, that are just coming into Christ, well, we have to teach them, well, how, how now that we have this, how, well, again, we talked about it, how, now that we have this, how do we sustain this? Now that we have it, how do I lay hold, how do I grasp it and lay hold to it? And that's, I think that's important teaching in the Church of Christ that we always need uh, to keep bringing forth through the scriptures, that we ought to teach that, hey, we, 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 this thing is just really just getting started for you. Amen. So it's just like, yeah, it got started for me when I first obeyed the gospel. When it got started for me, okay, well, how, well God, now that I'm saved, I want to sustain this. I know I have to sustain, I have to stand before you one day. I want to be able to sustain this, not only at that time, but to be successful in this life, even until then. Amen. It's a very good question. I think Brother Green had this. First of all, I just want to say, uh, my brother, man, just blew my socks off this morning. Uh, God, God that praise. was a wonderful lesson, bro. God be praised. That was a wonderful lesson, man. I mean, just the way you went through the scriptures and you connected everything together. And it just made so much common sense, as you said, you know, during your teaching. Because, I mean, it's hard to understand how people can think this way. And as I was listening to your lesson here, you know, and you said it, you know, they break the scriptures. That's exactly what they do. They'll take a scripture and then they'll try to make a doctrine out of that scripture which turns around and breaks other scriptures. Because, I mean, if, if there's no way to lose your salvation, then we would have to call Jesus a liar. And the reason why I say that is because when you go to John chapter 8 and verse number 21, mm -hmm. and this is Jesus speaking again, it says, Then uh, said Jesus again unto them, I go my way, and ye shall seek me, and shall die in your sins. Yes. Whether I go, you cannot come. So let's, let's just say what they're saying is true. That you can't never lose your salvation. And you go back to living a sinful life, and you die in that sins, what happens then? And Jesus 
just told them. And like I said, in order for what they're teaching to be true, then Jesus is a liar. And I believe Jesus. Well, I believe them and he's dead weak. So Amen. I just Amen. wanted to share that. But thank you once Amen. again, brother. And I'm, I'm so Amen. glad that you came, man. You know, like you said, me and you burn the phone right now. <laughs> Amen. You know, we do. Yes. And it's just so wonderful to finally get to meet you face to face, man. And yes. to really hear you teach, man. And it was just wonderful. Amen. 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 And, and just to comment off your your comment, uh, my brother Green, uh, and that's the other thing about it. We talk about sin is a transgression of law, but sin is also a separation. Amen. Sin is a separation from God. So like we just read, and that was a wonderful scripture you brought up. If we do die in our sins, we cannot go where Jesus is, whether we obey the gospel or not. Why would, why would we need to be saved in the first place? That's what we're saved from. We're saved from the wrath and the condemnation. So if we entangle ourselves back, as you were saying, if we entangle ourselves back up with that life and with that burden and bondage of sin, it's just no way. There's no way God can receive us because sin is a separation. It separates us from God. So that's, I thank you for that question, brother. Brother Nick. Yes. All right. well, thank you. Like the brothers already said, I appreciate it. I think this is a very important um, lesson because from my experience when I got baptized, I got baptized, well, Brother Henry, they shared, I will resume, they shared the gospel with me. And then they called and I got baptized in Florida. But they just baptized me, gave me a book, and I was like, okay, I didn't really know what to do. And uh, about took me about three or four months, I think, before I understood what I had to do. And, and luckily I got back into the me, you know, the Zoom studies yes. because they're that whole area that you just there's weak leaders and they don't understand this concept so this is so crucial because you, you gotta when someone gets baptized you gotta you gotta take them under your wing and you gotta you gotta guide them you know because amen. it's not over with so i just yeah. i just want to thank you thank you hey, amen wonderful brother That's wonderful. brother stevenson if you remember uh you taught a lesson on weak leaders i don't know if you remember that study i i, I listened to that attentively because that can be a cause also if you're not taught well, if you like you said, if you obey the gospel, what, okay, it's like now what? I need to know what do I need to do from this point on. But if you have weak leaders, weak teachers, weak Bible teachers, if you have all those weak elders that are not teaching you how to sustain your walk with God, we we look at what, what the Bible says in, in uh, Ezekiel chapter three, where he said, you know, about the watchman. And if we if we fail to wick, uh, fail to warn the wicked, not that we're wicked, but if we just fail to give the warning in general, warning means we have to teach, we have to we have to let a person know, we have to give information. So therefore, if I'm under a system, or if I'm in a congregation, I would say, brother Nick, as you said, if I'm in a congregation where I have weak leaders that are not teaching me how to sustain according to the word of God, well, of course I'm not going to know my people perish for lack of knowledge. So if I don't have the knowledge to be able to how to know how I myself in, and if I die in that knowledge, well, I'm going to be lost, but the one that's supposed to be teaching me is going to be lost. Because why? I didn't do my due diligence as teaching the oracles of God, which is a commandment. Mm -hmm. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. I think that's a commandment. That's right. So therefore, if I don't obey that commandment as a preacher, and then I, I fail to tell you, and then you go back into that life and die, now you obey the gospel. Mm -hmm. I've done that part right. But we talked about that even on the way over here, how we have to teach we have to teach the whole counsel of God. So we have to teach even after you get saved how to sustain that. But if I fail to do that and you die, well, I'm going to be held accountable for that as well. So it's very important, like you said, that uh, every church of Christ, uh, we pray, that is our prayer, that the leaders are strong in the things that they're teaching so people can continue to be able to find. Any other questions or comments on this lesson or anything else? Yes, sir, my brother. In my first ministry in Darksburg, Tennessee, I was riding with a preacher one day. He'd been there 15, I don't remember. And he said, and I said to him, how in the world can people look at Acts 2? I mean, that's just one scripture. And you have all things you mentioned. He said, how in the world can people look at that scripture and come away with something? different than that. And he said to me in, in the conversation, if someone has taught something long enough, it becomes true. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You, I mean, you can relate to that. Yes. You can convert it out of that. Yes. If you're taught something, it becomes true. And that's why we got to be really careful here in working with people to, to try to get them to see this. That's right. You know what I mean? And I think the second Peter 3 and 15 mm -hmm. You're ready to give an answer for the hope that is within you, yes. but do it with gentleness, gentleness. and respect. Mm -hmm. And so uh, that that's really stuck with me that uh, there's a lot of people, and I also think about James, I think it's James 2, 
Isn't that why the Bible teaches us that we have to work out our yeah. soul's salvation with plenty and truth? We have to work that out. Uh, you know, uh, no man that put his hand to the plow and looked back is fit for the kingdom of God. So we have to continue to work that faith. Like you said, we have to continue to work, uh, you know, work our salvation out. Why would you not even tell us to do that? It is, you know, if we don't work, well, you say work out your own salvation. Well, we have to work that out. Uh, matter of fact, I'm reminded of the scripture. I want to read it. Uh, let's go back to uh, Acts chapter 2. Just, it just dawned on me. Just ties into what we're talking about here. That's a good comment, my brother. Acts chapter 2. Let's go back uh, to verse. Um, let's go down to. Uh, yeah, there it is. <laughs> Thank you, brother. For 40. I was going to sign up to 39, but let's just jump to 40 as Brother Stevenson just helped me out on that. <clears throat> and with many other words did he testify and exhort, saying, Do what? Save yourselves from this untoward generation. So what is he saying? He first of all, he's saying in the, in the context of them getting saved that their salvation, because again, well, what he's teaching them in, in verses 37 and 38. But when you get down to 40, it's twofold because he says, and with in many other words, he testifies the Lord saying, save yourselves from this one towards generation. Well, that was for them to get saved, but it's also for them to stay saved. Amen. It's also for them to stay saved because save yourself. Just like we talked about, uh, if we're in churches, um, and I heard a gospel preacher say this. Um, when Jesus dealt with the churches in the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 2, he commended them on the things they were doing good. He commended them on the things they weren't doing good. But at the same time, what did he, almost after every passage, he said, him that have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying. So it ultimately comes down to an individual, your individual. Yes, Jesus was talking to the entire church, but he said, let him, he that have an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying. So it all still, at the end of the day, brother, comes down, like you say, completely. We got to hear what Jesus is saying through the scriptures, through gospel preachers that's teaching us the truth and teaching it rightly divided. We're hearing that. Let him hear. Again, save yourself. Let him hear. He that hear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying. So, again, it's a very, very, very profound statement uh, to let us know about completion. That's a good word to use. Thank God for that. Thank you for my brother. Appreciate it. Any other? Go ahead, brother. I was just thinking too when uh, during the lesson you were speaking about uh, those that believe in the faith only. You yes. Know, you reference uh, Romans 10 and 9, you know, and you reference also James chapter 2 and verse number 19. I just wanted to add another scripture to that. Okay. Uh, James 2 and 24, mm -hmm. which uh, Brother Stevenson first taught on this man. Yeah, down to another one that should hit me right in the gut. You know, but in James chapter 2, verse number uh, 24, it says, matter of fact, let me go to 23. Okay. It says, and the scriptures was fulfilled which said, Abraham believed God, and it was imputed unto him for righteousness, and he was called the friend of God. And then he says in 24, see then how that by works a man is justified and not by faith only. Right. And again, as, as Brother Stevenson taught it so great, you know, he said it's the only time you see in the Bible the word faith only, but it's always preceded by not. So we see it's not by faith only, which goes back to what uh, you were teaching in Acts chapter 2 and verse number 37. You know, it said, men and brother, what shall we do? It didn't say, what shall we believe? <laughs> it said, what shall we do? So again, brother, a uh, wonderful lesson, and I'm just, you know, as you're going, I'm steady picking up the scriptures, steady popping in my head from the stuff that you're Amen. Amen. So. Amen. Amen. Thank God. Uh, any other questions or comments? Yes, ma'am. Yes, sir.
that's very good, my sister. Because just, it, it, like I said, we, we tend to do that. We tend to focus on, you know, quote unquote, big sins, you know, stealing, lying, fornication. We, we tend to focus a lot on those. But the Bible said all unrighteousness is seen. All of it. Well, even things that we come back to, we, even when we do in the pandemic, just to your point, my sister, Hebrews chapter 10 and verse 27, when it comes to us gathering, well, churches that were locking their doors, do they do they not do we not know they were committing sin by doing that? Because it was a commandment. It's commanded us to gather under any such it didn't Bible just didn't say, uh, and I'm just using what your point for an example. Bible just not say gather, only gather when everything is going good. We ought to gather at all times, period. He says, do not forsake the assembling, the assembling of yourselves together. So to your point, very good point, my sister, just for us not even coming to worship and sin. And we don't repent of that, then hell will be our home. Amen. Do we understand? Amen. So that's that is a very, very that's very true. Amen. <laughs> you see, I'm glad you brought that name. That's an angle I missed on that. So thank Amen. you, my sister. That, that's that's very, very true. Amen. That's wonderful right there. Amen. Anyone else? Any other questions? God, we got time. I like a brother Stevenson. I'm I'm here till at least tomorrow. Anyway, <laughs> so we got time. Any other any other uh, questions? It doesn't even have to be about what we're talking about. It could be about anything. Not, not. I like that one. That was that, that's that's that was real powerful, right? Did I brought that, that to my mind? And, and like I said, uh, once saved, always saved. You know, e even in the church. Well, let's deal with that for a minute. Even in the church. Now we talk about out of the church if a person leaves and, and leaves the church. But what about right here in the church of Christ? What about in the church? Well, false doctrines that teaching tithing, sounding like instruments. You know those types of things. Uh, you know, teaching false doctrine on marriage, remarriage, and divorce. When anything that's taught wrong, if it's not taught according to the scriptures, the Bible says it's not a faith of sin. That's the Bible is clear on that. So we even if we, if we teach the person they can't get married, uh, if they if they've been divorced for reasons other than fornication, they got they can't get married. They got to live single for the rest. We know that's false doctrine. And if that's being taught, guess what that's doing? That's placing people in bondage. It's placing, it's, it's making people feel cursed. It's making them feel irritated, especially those uh, that don't have the gift as we always talk. If a person don't have the gift when it comes to marriage and they happen to get divorced and we, and we come and tell them you cannot get married, do you know, first of all, what they, it's going to cause that person to sin. It's going to cause, like the Bible says in Matthew chapter 5, it's going to cause that person to commit fornication, to sin. And if they can, they die in that sin, they are going to go to hell. And then we're going to be held accountable for that because we talk what? False doctrine. Amen? Amen. So, so the idea is, even in the church, if we teaching things that are wrong, if, we make it, if, we, if our examples that we live is wrong, same thing. Go ahead, Brother Steve. <laughs> yes, sir. Stevenson gave, a baby has to grow. Baby's not going to stay a year, all this life. It's going to continue to grow. It has to learn how to walk. It has to learn how to eat. It has to learn how to talk. It has to learn how to do things. Tie up the shoes. Well, if they never grow, and if they're not going to talk to grow, you have to parent. The parent has to teach that child to grow. Well, again, as babes in Christ, 
we have to go, like you said, we, like he, like Brother Stevenson said, well, we fail to teach those things. And like I said, the only way we're going to know, the Bible said, how can they hear without the preaching? Romans chapter 10. Okay? So if, if they're not coming to worship, if they're not, and I'm not talking about, you know, like I said, we, well, you know, you hear, we already know that a person that says, this is not really the Lord's church. If they say, I can hear the preacher at home. Well, that's not what the scripture said. The Bible said, don't forsake the gathering of yourselves together. Don't forsake that. Whether two or three are gathered together, you know. So therefore, if we don't obey that day, and that and when God specifically tells us something, sister and brother Stevenson, as you said, it is a commandment. And we we so much look at, uh, you know, commandments like the Ten Commandments or just specific commandments when we know it's a commandment. But anything Jesus tells us to do, He said, "How can you call me, Lord, Lord, and I keep my commandment? How can you even call me that?" So therefore. If anything that God specifically tells us we need to be doing is a command. And when we forsake those commandments and we fail to obey it, we are in error with God and we need to repent of that. Right. Amen. I think Brother Coffee looks like you about to say, look like you want to say something. Go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. It's open. sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. Yes, and that's what that's that's one of my favorite scriptures. When I'm getting up tight, when I'm just finding myself getting no fire, I mean weird weird and I, I I always have to go back to the word. And that word washes my irritation, my frustration. It get me settled back into the mind of Christ. You know, as I'm uh, dealing with my uh whether it be my sin or Holding the evil and the good. So um, 
It just behooves us. We know God is watching. Amen. Not just because God is watching, because we want to do it. Right. Let's just not just do it because God, well, oh, God watch me, I better live right now. We want to have that while we're not saying, God, I love you that much. And I want to follow you that much. I'm going to obey you at all costs and at any cost. Amen. Now, now, what, what I want to do, Brother Coffee, is what I want to do. Um, I'm done. <laughs> I thank God for, for this opportunity once again. I am going to, no, I'm going to talk, I'm, I'm just about ready to talk back to our, 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 our uh, preacher in charge, Brother brother uh, Stevenson, and uh, I'll let him take it from there, amen. But uh, I, I just thank God for, once again, this opportunity to be able to, to share with you in the Word of God today. And uh, I'm, I'll just look forward to enjoy the rest of the day and uh, to hearing these other good brothers uh, speak on today and what God has given them. Amen? Amen. So we just thank God for that. I'll turn uh, back over now to Brother Stevenson. Amen? Amen. 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 Okay, go ahead. But it really goes back to Brother Lee's point. Because the We're created in the image of God. I mean, that's 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 what makes us different than animals uh, that God created. So that Genesis 1:26, we were created in His image, meaning that uh, we have volition. Uh, we can we have free will. We can choose to do right or we can choose to do wrong. Uh, but God wants us to serve Him because we we choose to serve Him. This is again why He put the tree of the knowledge of good and evil in the garden. Because had that not that been there, then he would have been making us serve him. And so what makes the difference is God put the tree there to give man a choice whether or not to want to serve him, obey him, uh, because we are created in his in, in his image. And so free will uh, is just it's just our DNA. You know, I can walk away from the truth right now if I so chose to. It's my choice. Uh, and God didn't want us to serve him because feels he's making us serve him. As was stated, you know, we want to, we ought to serve him because we love him. God wants to serve him because, because we love him. We want to do right because we know he loves us. Okay, anybody have anything else? Anything else? Yes, brother. We've got a water issue down in the kitchen. Oh, really? Okay. Okay, my brother. Yeah. Okay. Up here. Okay, brother. Okay. Okay, my brother. Yeah, okay. So we'll watch up here. I'm saying you got some barbecue down there, somebody well, said. I, I heard you and Well, it's it's the Russian judge. <laughs> <laughs> He's the Russian barbecue. All right. <laughs> Better be good, man. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah. I get him not. I don't know. I'll go easy on yeah, you. Go All right. Okay, brothers and sisters. Uh, and brother Joyce, wonderful class, brother. It really was a great class. Anybody have anything else they want to add? Any other Bible questions? Okay, tonight we got Brother Sanders. Oh uh, yeah, sound doctrine. We listen to this brother come on tonight. You know this brother's gonna do us some good a good job in teaching God's word on sound doctrine. I'll be God's will tonight at six o'clock. So we're looking forward to coming back. Uh, open it up for questions. Anybody have any questions on tonight as well? Okay. Uh, but it's all you mind give us our souls and prayers. Absolutely. I'm gonna go ahead and pray for the food too. Okay. 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 Yes, sir. God, thank you so much for a beautiful day. Uh, Thank you for this wonderful opportunity to study from your word. We're yes. thankful uh, to get this lesson. Yes. And, uh, and we know there's a lot of people confused about yes. this. And uh, we're thankful that your word is simple. Yes. And it's a common sense book. Yes. And, uh, but be with us as we try to talk to people and engage them. Yes. Uh, yes. That we be gentle. Yes. Uh, but stand on the word. Amen. And, uh, we just uh, thankful for your word. Yes. God, would you bless the food that we're about to eat uh, to our bodies? Uh, help us to keep busy. Yes. 
in your service. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.